Hey, and welcome back to another video. So I actually see a lot of beginner developers do a whole load of tutorials. And you know, you've learned all this stuff, which is great. And now you're unsure about how to actually either bring this knowledge together or become a better developer in general. And it seems like once you start your journey, you're looking around like, Bruh. <laughs> For me, it's dev setting a lot of hardcore expectations and not being patient. A lot of this advice that I'm actually going to give you in this video actually will apply to any industry that you're starting in and whether that be mobile, web or backend and you're just starting out and looking at how to become a better developer. So let's get straight into it. So the first advice, drum roll. <laughs> So one thing for me that's really important is to learn the fundamentals. So let's be honest, right? Would you trust someone to perform an important surgery on you if you found out that they read a few articles on how to fix a leg? I don't think so. Or if you entered a game tournament, would you enter that tournament without learning how the actual game works? No, because that would just end horribly. And this is why if you're a web, native backend or whatever platform that you're working on, it's really important that you learn the fundamentals of your platform. Now, I'm a native developer at heart. So for me, that would be learning Swift. Sorry, Objective-C, I'm done with your brackets. I ain't dealing with you no more. <laughs> so learning the language of that platform and sticking to it is really important so if you're someone who works on the web then learning the you know language for one because i know web has a whole treasure chest of different things but just pick one and stick to it and learn it really well now another thing is learning the ui elements and also as well how the platform handles ui so again for me that will be learning the apple human interface guidelines and studying how Apple wants me to lay out UI on the screen and how they want you to space things and accessibility and all of that. If you're someone who works on web, then that will be learning the equivalent of whatever that is for your platform. Now, another basic example of a fundamental is fetching and displaying data on the screen. So how does your platform fetch data from some kind of service and put that on the UI? So these are just some fundamentals that you can apply and you can actually you know easily just search fundamentals that you should know if you're in web or back end and just find out what it is and apply that alongside learning the programming language so you can understand how everything works within that framework or whatever it is you're working on and the next thing is practice practice and practice even a little more now after you learn the fundamentals the most important thing you can do is practice so when you go to McDonald's or your favorite restaurant and quick pause, if you are obsessed with McDonald's like me, uh, leave a comment in the description box with your favorite McDonald's item because me personally, we all need to stay we all need to stay together at these hard times, man, because Elon's doing a madness on Twitter. We don't know what's gonna happen. So let's just band together and enjoy some Big Macs. Back on topic, right? <laughs> or if you go into a shop and you're just buying something, you don't suddenly forget you know how to order or how to buy something and why is that well you've done it so many times it's ingrained into you now you remember the pattern so well you don't even need to think about it. it's just second nature and you want to make sure that this example that i'm talking about applies to whatever it is that you're learning in real life because you want it so ingrained into you that you remember the pattern of what it takes to complete that task and you need to make sure that when you're continuously repeating and building things that you're forming those habits so it's important to make sure that you put time aside to go over what it is that you're learning, no matter the field that you're Now, you want to start small so you can build big. So you're going to get excited since you're learning something new. And I'll be honest here, I still remember to this day when I made my first get request using Swift. You know, I was buzzing. I was like, yes, now I can make a call to an API. I'm going to go and build Facebook. And that was a really big mistake that I made <laughs> because... Thinking you can take on the world is great and it's good to have confidence, but it's actually going to dent your confidence if you try to take on something that's too overwhelming. So how do you tackle this? Well, what you should do instead is actually learn smaller topics that you can then later bring together into a bigger building block because you now know the fundamentals of each part. So it's important to learn things in more manageable and easier chunks as well. Now, something that I see a lot of developers not do enough, and that's learning how to break down a problem. Now, a habit you really want to form is being able to actually break down a problem, like I just said. And if you're looking to be a solo dev, 
uh, you know, work in a team or even a hobbyist, you're going to face a problem at some point in your career. And the worst thing that you can do is just dive straight in. You want to actually instead create a plan and you want a plan of action that in plain English describes how you tackle and resolve the problem. Like, honestly, your plan should be so high level that even your nan, if you're American, that just means grandmama here in the UK. But <laughs> if you was to tell your nan how you're going to basically tackle this problem, she should understand what it is that you're talking about at a high level. Another benefit of creating a plan is it allows you to see any holes and edge cases that you may have missed. So get yourself some paper or a whiteboard or app or anything that you want to use and just take a step back to think about how you're going to tackle this problem. Now, I'll be honest with you. I hate reading books. I'm not a books guy at all, but it's important to know how to read documentation and seriously get into the habit of reading it as well. Now, I know I do tutorials on my channel where I teach iOS development, but even when I talk about a topic, you want to get into the habit of being able to go and read the docs of that area that I'm talking about. Or if you're working on a different platform from iOS development, just get into the habit of being able to read the documentation of that API or new feature that you're learning to build. Like, let's be honest, right? How much easier is it to build stuff from IKEA when you read the instructions? It's a lot easier, right? And that's literally what the docs are, their instructions on how you should be building things for the platform that you're working on. Now, for me, obviously, that's going to be doing working with the Apple documentation. But for you, whatever platform it is, you just use that. Now, you've got all this knowledge and what you want to do is have a playground to actually, you know, play around and mess around. And that's why it's important to start a project. Now, one of the best things that you can do is do that because this is literally, like I said, your playground to apply new things that you've learned here without any backlash or even consequences. And you can actually build even more confidence simply by just doing this. Now, for simple project ideas, I actually do have a video on my channel, which I'll link above in the cards and in the bottom. You know, I, look, I like to look after you, you know that, right? But you want to start a project not only to deeper your understanding, but so you can see how you can actually combine different features together within a project. Like when you're working on any kind of app, like let's say it's a weather app, it normally has multiple features within it that you need to combine. And you need to interact with things within a weather app, such as data, the user's location, you know, working with caching things on their devices, a whole bunch of things that you need to, you know, bring together. So you can see that by having the fundamentals, like I mentioned before, and now also as well, seeing how you can bring those features that you spent time learning how together will help deepen your understanding in terms of how you build stuff. Now, the final point I want to make is this is a journey. I'll be honest with you, right? For me personally, I only got comfortable with iOS development when I first started after like maybe a year and a half or two years. It's not a race on who will become the quickest developer. You got to understand that people are wired and built differently. You got to have days where you face a problem and you're looking around like, bro, well, what's the point of this? And it's fine. It's literally you learning something that you don't know. One of the most important things you can take from this video is that you don't know what you don't know. So taking the time to fully understand what it is that you're learning and then applying this logic until it sticks is all that should matter. It doesn't matter whether you see people posting crazy videos on Twitter of how they create like crazy animations. That's fine. You'll get to that point one day. But what you should do is just improve your learning and also as well try and find people that will help improve your learning as well. And if you're struggling and finding ways to actually get started in the iOS community or any community in general, the same process applies. I actually do have a video on my channel, which I'll link above as well, that actually tells you how to get involved with communities that you should check out. So as you build confidence over time, you'll start to notice that you actually pick things up a lot quicker. And the main thing you should take from this, like I said, is just take your time. Everything will be all right. And, you know, you'll be a great developer. So. If you have any advice that you think that I didn't cover and you think would be great for beginner developers, then feel free to put it in the comment section down below. Also, as well, let me know what you order from McDonald's. <laughs> and as well, if you enjoy my teaching style, then I actually do have courses that you can check out if you go to my website, which I'll have on the page now. So you can see those. And I'm really excited about some of the new courses that I'm going to have releasing very soon that I can't wait to share. 
And if you want to actually join and support me on YouTube, I really appreciate it so I can do more videos like this and put more of my time into YouTube. But you can actually join my YouTube membership and you get some nice cool badges, exclusive badges and stickers that I think look really cool. So definitely check that out. And if you want to also support as well in other monetary ways, you can either buy me a coffee or you can donate you know, with the little thanks button on the screen here. And, you know, the coffee is also in the description box too. Now, if you don't want to donate any money at all, that's fine. That's cool. But what you can do to support me for free is simply by sharing this video with people that you know that you think might find this video useful. Also as well, you can like, comment and subscribe to the channel as well, as well as hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. Thanks to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate your support. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.